Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to install and configure the Cadex Vista digital system and the TBS Crossfire Nano SE receiver on the Flywheel Explorer. By now you've been probably bombarded with many videos of this new cool looking hexacopter and since I've got the plug and play version which doesn't come with the Cadex Vista and the ready receiver, I decided to make this quick setup video in order to make your life easier in case you're going to opt in for the plug and play version. The first thing that you need to do is to make sure that the propellers are removed. Then using a 1.5mm hex key, remove the top plate. The radio receiver is going to be mounted on this 16x16mm plate on top of the flight controller and the Calix Vista transmission unit is going to be mounted on the back of the frame using these M2 screws which are pre-assembled on these 20x20mm mounting holes. In addition, in order to make your life easier, and also in order to avoid possible mistakes, since this is a very tight flight controller, Flywo pre-soldered the relevant wires for connecting the radio receiver and the Cadex Vista to the flight controller. The 4 pins just a connector on the front of the flight controller is going to be connected to the radio receiver. The red wire is pre-soldered to the 4.5 volts, black to ground, the yellow to the RX1 pad on the flight controller, and the white wire to the TX1 pad on the flight controller. Similarly, this 6 pins JST connector is going to be connected to the Cadex Vista. The red is VCC, black is ground, blue is the RX4 pad on the flight controller, yellow is the TX3 pad on the flight controller, and the white wire is the RX3 pad on the flight controller. So in case you are going to use the DJI Ready controller, you will need to use the blue wire in order to connect it to the SBUS pad of the Cadex Vista, and if you are going to use an external radio receiver, you can simply remove it. Now let's install the radio receiver. First trim the pre-soldered wires, but make sure that you leave enough room for mistakes. Then solder the wires to the Crossfire Nano receiver in the following manner. Install the TBS Immortal T antenna on the bottom of the drone using this 3D printed TPU part. Connect the antenna to the radio receiver. Bind it with your radio controller, and by the way, the radio receiver is going to be powered up also when the flight controller is powered only via USB. Then connect the flight controller to your computer. Make sure that the serial RX switch is enabled on your one. Under the configuration tab, set the serial receiver provider to Crossfire. Save the settings and reboot the flight controller. Make sure that all the sticks and switches are working properly. And only then put a heat shrink on the radio receiver and mount it to the top plate using a double-sided tape. As for installing the Cadex Vista, first apply solder to its soldering pads, then remove the metal nuts from the M2 screws. Make sure that the capacitor is not in your way. Trim the pre-soldered wires and again make sure to leave enough room for mistakes and then solder them to the Cadex Vista in the following manner. Then using the 20x20mm M2 screws, mount and secure the Vista. Mount the camera unit on the front of the frame. Insert the antenna which is included in the kit to the 3D printed TPU part. Connect the antenna to the Vista unit and mount the 3D printed TPU part on the back of the frame. Put back the top plate and using the DJI Assistant tool, activate the Cadex Vista and update it to the latest available version. Now after making sure that the configuration slash MSP switch is enabled on your tree, you are pretty much set and accept defining your favorite flight modes and OSD elements, everything else is pre-configured for you, including the tune, which is working great. In addition, the FELSEF tab is pre-configured for you and the GPS rescue feature is enabled, and in case you are not familiar with this feature, I recommend to check out my recent video where I go over all the available options. Anyway, that's going to be it for this quick setup guide. I hope it was informative enough and covered most of the issues that you might encounter when setting up the plug and play version, and in case you didn't and you still have problems, leave a comment down below and I will do my best to help you out. I wish you all happy flying and see you soon on my next videos. Goodbye.